In this video, we're going to learn about flexible array members in C. So flexible array members allow us to have structs which contain an array with a flexible size. The feature is available in C99 onwards. So for example, we could have here struct employee. And this struct is going to have three members, an int ID for the employee ID, an int salary for the employee salary, and then a car array name with no actual size defined. We're going to be able to store employee structs which contain a name member of a flexible size. So these two members here are the only members that are going to contribute to the size of the struct. The name member is not going to contribute to the size of the struct. First, let's investigate that. We'll output here using the size of operator, the size of an employee struct. So we'll have here size of struct employee, and then colon percent CU to output the size of the struct, followed by backslash n for a new line. Then we'll have size of struct employee. And we'll save compile and run the program. And we get here size of struct employee is eight bytes. Now it turns out that eight bytes is the size of these two ints here. We could output the size of an int to confirm this. So here we'll have printf and size of int colon percent zu backslash n and we'll have size of int. If we save compile and run the program, we'll see the size of an int is four bytes. So it's only these two members here that are contributing to the size of the employee struct. Name does not actually have a size. If we want to store an employee struct, which does use the name member, what we can do is dynamically allocate enough space for an employee struct and however much space is necessary to store the name array of our desired length. So for example, let's say we want to store the name John into the name car array. The name John is going to take four characters for each of the letters in the name John, and then one more character for the null terminator character, which ends the string. So when allocating space for this struct, what we'll have is the size of a employee struct and five more bytes. So first, let's declare a struct employee pointer. We'll have here struct employee star employee one. Then we'll use malloc to allocate enough space. We'll have here employee one is equal to malloc, the size of struct employee, and then plus five. And the plus five here is to account for these five characters here. So we can then use string copy to copy in the string John into this name member, and it's going to work. Now, because we're using malloc, and because we're going to use the string copy function strcpy to copy the string John into this member, we'll include up here the stdlib.h library, so we can use malloc and free, and we'll also include the string.h library. Then down here, we'll initialize these members. We'll have employee one ID is equal to 412345, and we'll have employee one salary is equal to 150,000, and we'll use string copy to set employee one name to the string John. And we could use printf to output each of these members. So we could have printf, and we'll have employee ID colon percent D to output an int backslash n, and we'll output the employee ID. We could also output the employee salary with employee salary colon percent D and backslash n, and we'll have employee one salary and we could also output the employee name with printf employee name colon percent s to output a string 
and then we'll have employee one name. And because this is dynamically allocated memory, we should free it when we're done working with it. So here we'll have free and employee one. And if we save compile and run the program, we'll see that we did store those values into the struct members successfully. So what's happening in memory looks like this. We have that the struct members are stored sequentially. So first we have ID and then salary and then name. And four bytes are used to store the value 412,345 for ID. And four bytes are used to store the value 150,000 for salary. And then we have five bytes used to store the five characters to store the string John. So in C, a struct is stored as a block of memory like this. So when we have code, like for example, employee one arrow and then salary, what the compiler will do is produce code which accesses the right part of this block of memory based on the size of the members. So it knows that ID is four bytes. So to get the salary portion of this struct, the compiler will essentially produce code which is going to jump four bytes into the block of memory to get this salary. If we have employee one arrow name and then at the index three, the compiler can do a similar thing. The compiler knows how far to go into the block of memory to get the name member based on the size of ID and salary. And the compiler knows the type of the name elements. So the compiler knows how far to go into that array when also using the array index that's being accessed at runtime. Now I'm oversimplifying things, but that's basically the idea. Now it is important that the flexible array member is the last member of the struct. So for example, we couldn't have car name array as the second member of the struct and then have in salary after that. If we try to save compile and run this, we'll get an error. It says flexible array member name with type car array is not at the end of the struct. So we can't do that. The flexible array member has to be the last member of the struct. And that makes sense based on the way the struct is stored in memory and the way it's accessed. If all of the struct members that come before the flexible array member are fixed in size, the compiler can figure out how far to go in memory to reach the flexible array member. But if the flexible array member is say in the middle of the members, the problem is the compiler doesn't know how far to go in memory to reach these members that come after the flexible array member because the compiler doesn't know how large this is. That's the problem. There actually used to be a bit of a trick in C programming where the last member of a struct would be an array with one element. Then when actually allocating space for the struct, space would be allocated like we did below, leaving extra space in the block of memory for additional array elements. This trick was essentially formalized in C99 with flexible array members. Now, another consequence of this is that car name array is an incomplete type. That means we can't use the size of operator to determine the size of that member. Let's try that. Down here, we'll have printf. And we'll output here the size of the employee one structs name member with colon percent ZU to output the size followed by a new line. And we'll output here the size of employee one arrow name. If we save compile and try to run the program, we'll get an error here. It says invalid application of size of to an incomplete type car array. So we can't apply the size of operator to our flexible array member. The flexible array member also can't be the only member of the struct. So for example, if we had here struct data and then int array, 
Here, Array is the only member of the struct. If we try to save, compile, and run the program, we'll get an error. It says, flexible array member array, not allowed in otherwise empty struct. We could do something like add a length. So for example, we could have here int length, and we could use this length member to keep track of the length of that array. And if we save, compile, and run the program, the error is going to go away. Now we can't statically initialize the flexible array member of a struct. So down here, if we had, let's say, struct data, data one, we could initialize the length member with is equal to two in squiggly brackets. We could then output that with printf data one dot length colon percent d to output the int backslash n for a new line and then data one dot length. If we save, compile, and run the program, we'll get here that data one dot length is two. If we try to do this though, let's say comma, and then four and five for the array elements. Now, if we try to save, compile, and run the program, we'll get an error. It says initialization of flexible array members is not allowed. Now, according to the GNU C compiler documentation, this is possible in GNU C. I'll post a link in the video description to that documentation. Now, if we want to dynamically allocate space for a data struct, which is going to contain an array member with three elements, we could do it like this. We'll have here struct data and then star data one to declare a pointer variable this time. And we'll have data one is equal to malloc the size of struct data plus size of int times three. So here, the reason why we have size of int times three is that the size of an int is going to be more than one byte. It's going to likely be four bytes. So here, we'll multiply the size of an int by three to make space to store three integers. Before, when we had plus five here, that's because cars take up one byte and there's no need to use size of car multiplied by five to get the number of bytes required. So down here, we'll now set these array elements. We'll have data one length is equal to three, data one array at the index zero is equal to seven, data one array at the index one is equal to eight, and data one array at the index two is equal to nine. And then we can free data one. And if we save, compile, and run the program, it's all going to work okay. So this is how we can use flexible array members in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.